How's it going guys? It seems we have more news for you all in terms of current, future and event stuff based on loot, blueprints and more. If you find this useful, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe for more and for news. I am really looking at the prospect of covering this more and more, so this is going to be a good place for that as well as Destiny. It seems Anthem will be like its direct competition in having tiered gear. The top tier gear will be Masterworks gear and Legendary gear. Legendary gear being better than Masterworks is the plain response from Ben Arvine, one of the lead producers. The difference being between the two is that the Legendary version will just have better stats. So think of it like if one has accuracy plus 25, the other one will have accuracy plus 28. It's basically going to be one tier above it, but just better stats. There will be around 100 legendaries and exotics when the game launches. 70ish of these will be gear and weapons, with around 30ish of these being components. Components are designed to enhance your playstyle and abilities, so for you coming from Destiny, think mods, but I'm hoping nothing that basic. Some components will also be javelin specific, which is nice. At launch, there will be one of each legendary item, but this is being expanded with future updates, which is free. There will be a variety of weapons and weapon types. For example, you'll have slow firing auto rifles, fast firing auto rifles, so expect a lot of variety when it comes to choice. In Anthem, you'll also get what is called blueprints. These are used to craft things as you would expect. You earn blueprints through challenges, you craft the blueprint with the materials required, and you create the item and you equip said piece or component. Essentially, these blueprints are designed to be gap fillers in your build to keep you going and customize some more. It's here so if your RNG is bad, you can still craft and fill them gaps, hence the gap filler statements. So essentially, when Ben Arvine is saying this, think of the division. The division's RNG at one point was pretty bad and when you were looking for a set weapon or a set item to be on sale, it really just was a waiting game. However, periodically, you would be able to buy blueprints and once you bought the blueprint, you could actually go and earn materials in the open world and actually get these weapons crafted yourself in order to fill that gap until that role you wanted or that specific thing you wanted would drop. This is pretty much the same notion here and I'm happy that they are introducing something like this. It tells me that they're taking more of a division approach than a destiny approach, which is no way a bad thing by the way, because in my opinion the division approach is a lot more better and a lot more customizable. Something that's pretty awesome is that there will be free roaming bosses that spawn in the open world that will drop high level loot. Yes, you heard that. They will drop high level loot. This is pretty amazing and it gives you even more reason to not ignore them. I see in other games, open world bosses, you just go to them, kill them, they drop a couple of resource materials and you're like, meh. The next time you see them, you're like, meh, can't be bothered. They don't even drop anything of use. The fact that these roaming bosses can drop high level loot, even if it's a chance, it means if you see one, you're going to get involved and take them out. It's that simple. And this to me, such a basic, basic, fundamental thing is so important in this day and age. Something really cool was Ben Irvine's response to scaling. He was asked, when we reach a high level, essentially elder game level of things, will the lower level content scale to us, much like in other games, like Destiny for example, so we can't outright slaughter everything? Ben responded with yes, there will be scaling, but just to your pilot level, which is level 30. If you have very high rarity gear, you will be very powerful and essentially outscale and slaughter everything in the lower level areas. So essentially enemies will scale up to level 30, but your gear can push you further. And if you have put the time in to get God tier gear, you're going to steam and face roll over everything in the lower level, how it should be. So once again, well done Bioware. You are so far ticking every box that's getting me interested and getting me hyped. 
In terms of clans or guilds, expect a very similar thing to what Bungie did with Destiny. Clans progress as its members earn XP and progress the ranks within the clan. This in turn unlocks clan perks and so forth. It seems Anthem will have something similar to this and it is the direction they're looking to go in order to get people to come into clans, work together and push the clan forward. Whether lore will be available in the outside worlds or through terminals or through secrets to find, you will have codex entries to collect. These are essentially like lore books, so for those lore enthusiasts out there, that part of the game is also being covered for you. Onto the demo, the demo will start you at level 10. The demo will give you access to a mission, a stronghold, a Tarsis and some free play. More importantly, no progress will carry over to the new release, so experiment to your heart's desire. Try new things out, experiment with new stuff, nothing you do here will impact what comes on February the 22nd. However, starting you at level 10 gives you access to a wide selection of things, so this should give you a good idea as to whether or not this game is for you. You will be able to progress to level 15 and even use the Forge, which is the hub for customization, essentially the heart of Anthem, so that's pretty awesome in itself. You will also have access to all javelins in the demo, no restrictions placed on these either. Looking ahead, post launch, currently there is no infusion system like you have in say Destiny or other games. Once the weapon is out leveled, much like in Diablo and Borderlands, it's done with and you move to the next more powerful weapon. However, this isn't to say that it's not something that may not come in the future and it is something they are considering, but for launch and the immediate future, it's not on the cards. Javelins at launch will have one ultimate at launch with a view to expand on these with time. Texture due to CVAA has been difficult to implement and won't be present for launch, but it is something they are looking to add and hopefully in a not too distant future, text chat on Anthem can actually be a thing and be something that their competitors don't have at all. So this is pretty awesome for consoles. The big question was PvP, and if Anthem will have any. Ben Irvine responded, not at launch, but they will look at PvP and see how the demand for it is. Anthem primarily is a PvE game, and their focus for this will remain PvE. However, if there is enough demand for PvP, they may create little battle arenas or something to that effect that's excluded from the main experience. I'm hoping if they do go down the PvP route, it will be set loadouts with set frames and set stuff. So essentially, what you do in PvE is isolated to PvE, and what you do in PvP is isolated to PvP. Essentially, two different game modes. This would work, and this would keep everything fairly balanced because the PvP then would be its own contained unit and would be balanced towards itself, whereas the PvE side will be the anthem. So if they are going to go down the PvP route at some point in the future, this is what I hope they should do. Well everyone, thanks for watching. The open VIP demo is coming fast and with that for many, their first real go at Anthem. I am looking forward to this game. I'm weary, but in Bioware I trust and I believe they will deliver. Until the next video, remain legend. <laughs>